Hello, welcome to today's RTA webinar recording on lodging a tenancy dispute resolution request through the RTA's web services platform. My name is Lynn Smith from the Residential Tenancies Authority and today I am joined by our subject matter expert from the web services project team, Leah Brooker. Thanks for joining me today, Leah, and stepping through how to use web services for this process. Thanks, Lynn. This is a great new addition to the RTA's web services platform. It is quick and easy to use and will help the RTA's customers lodge a tenancy dispute request online. In today's recording, Leah and I will be looking at what is a tenancy dispute resolution request, matters that are unsuitable for conciliation. We'll also step you through some quick tips on self-resolution, the common types of tenancy disputes that occur during a tenancy, clarification over the bond refund process and how that works when there is a claim that may be greater than the bond amount. We'll also play a short video showing the step-by-step -step process in how to submit the tenancy dispute online through the web services. What happens next with the dispute resolution request process and at the end of the conciliation, if it's not agreed, we'll look at the next step which goes to the tribunal. Firstly, Lee, I'll get you to explain what is a tenancy dispute resolution request. Thanks, Lynn. So the RTA can help try and resolve a dispute whether you're a property manager owner or a tenant. Either party can submit a dispute resolution request with the RTA for assistance. Most commonly, you would know the RTA can help with bond disputes when someone disagrees how the bond can be paid out. However, the RTA also provide assistance during a tenancy if there is an issue that cannot be resolved. The new web service function will enable customers to submit a dispute resolution request online. It is similar to submitting a tenancy dispute through the paper process. Before I go into the process, let's look at matters that are not suitable for conciliation. You can also find a list on the RTA's website and these include... Where a matter is classed as an urgent application as defined under the Residential Tenancies and Rooming Accommodation Act 2008, they go directly to Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal and do not require conciliation. Matters that are not covered under the tenancy laws and disputes that may involve other legal matters or need to have an outcome in court. This could also involve criminal or civil matters and therefore not suitable for conciliation. As an example, if it is a body corporate dispute or a dispute between an owner and a real estate agent or a criminal theft matter, we would not cover this. One area to also explain is that if one or both parties are unable to be contacted to initiate the process or where someone is not negotiable or unwilling to participate, these cases would be deemed not suitable or if someone wishes to go straight to the tribunal, have their day in court, we would just issue a notice of unresolved dispute to help them with the next step in the process. Thanks, Leah. With self-resolution, you should always attempt to resolve any disputes yourself with the other party in the first instance. Sometimes it might be challenging to do so. No one likes confrontation. However, being clear when you are communicating or tailoring your communication to suit the situation may help resolve the issue. As we have said many times, communication is the key to resolving disputes. Listen and be respectful. No point in either side raising their voice. You need to be mindful of the language you use, ask questions to be better informed and share information, evidence, documentation or photos. Remember you cannot resolve something that you keep as a secret. Be open and communicate. You need to consider all sides of the argument and consider whether you can negotiate or compromise and work together to find a solution. The RTA has several webinars and information with helpful tips about resolving disputes available on the RTA's website at rta.qld.gov.au. So let's look at the types of disputes that may occur during the tenancy where you can use the Tenancy Dispute Resolution Request process through our web services if you have not been able to resolve this yourself. Ending a tenancy. While the RTA cannot overturn a process followed by the tenancy laws, sometimes people may need to negotiate on extra time or there may be issues to address with a notice served or there may be a lease break situation. 
repairs and maintenance, and this could be where requests have been made to address the repair and the item is still not fixed, particularly after issuing a breach notice. Issues about entry to the rental property, keeping in mind the legislation is very clear about the rules of entry and we do encourage both owners, managers and tenants to work together in following the rules and access. Rent arrears, water charging and also compensation. The compensation may be because of a loss of an appliance or part of the property not accessible or in use or delays with repairs or it could be compensation for money owed over and above the bond. Lee is going to talk more about that process shortly. If you are seeking compensation or dealing with tenancy matter, you have a six months time frame from when you are aware of the breach or the event to start this process. Remember with most disputes, they can be resolved with good, respectful communication. Be open to listening and working through solutions together. So over to you Leah to talk through the important process when there is also a bond dispute involved. Thanks, Lynn. I just want to spend a few minutes to explain the differences between bond dispute and tenancy dispute claim for compensation. So at the end of a tenancy, once handover has occurred or the end of the tenancy notice period date has passed, either the owner, manager or tenant can submit a refund of rental bond. A managing party may claim some or all of the bond to cover outstanding rent or an expense that may, be, may have occurred during the tenancy and owed at the end. If a refund is in process, whether it is waiting for an agreement from another party to the bond or a bond in dispute, you can only use the Tenancy Dispute Resolution web services for claim greater than the bond amount or dispute a tenancy database listing. Keep in mind, if you are a tenant disputing a database listing because it is inaccurate and doesn't meet the legislative requirements, this is an urgent application and you can go direct to QCAT. For financial compensation, this is typically where there may have been a claim greater than the bond amount. You can still submit a tenancy dispute resolution request through web services. Either a tenant or a managing party can submit a claim for compensation. It needs to be done before the bond is paid out. If a bond has been finalised and paid out and you wish to claim for greater than the bond amount or for compensation, you will not be able to use web services. You will need to submit a paper dispute resolution request form. You can only use web services for tenancy disputes while there is still a bond active and not refunded. If you don't have a bond paid and lodged at the RTA, you can still access the RTA's dispute resolution service by submitting a paper form, available for download from the RTA's website. So we're just going to show you a quick step-by-step -step instructional video on how to lodge a tenancy dispute through web services. We'll be back in a moment. You can use the RTA's tenancy dispute resolution web service in one of two different ways. Firstly, during a tenancy, to request dispute resolution for tenancy disputes. Common dispute reasons include repairs, rent arrears and water charges. Secondly, you can use it at the end of a tenancy to request a claim greater than the bond. At this stage, tenants can also use the web service to dispute a tenancy database listing. In this video, we'll take you through how to submit a dispute request during a tenancy. Before you begin, you'll need an RTA bond number for the tenancy, a QGov account, and some customers will also need an RTA ID. You'll start on the Tenancy Dispute Resolution Web Services Before You Begin page on the RTA website. Once you've read and understood all the relevant information, click on Start Now. Next, you'll be directed to the Terms and Conditions page. You'll need to read understand and agree to these terms to proceed. Next, you'll be directed to the QGov login page. Here, you should enter your QGov details or create a QGov account using 100 points of Australian or State Government issued ID. More information on how to create a QGov account can be found on the RTA website. Now you'll need to provide information about your relationship with the property. Confirm your QGov details and provide a contact number. 
Enter your RTA bond number. If you're an agent, property manager, joint lesser, or a tenant organisation, you'll also need to provide your RTA ID. Confirm the property details. Next, confirm if the tenants have vacated the property. We'll select no. You'll then be asked if you have spoken to the other party. From this point on, helpful information boxes will be provided to help you understand how the dispute resolution process works. These information boxes are tailored to you, so the information displayed will differ depending on how you answer the questions and whether you're a managing party or a tenant. Now you'll need to confirm who else is involved in the dispute. If you're a managing party, you'll be able to select if the dispute is with one or multiple tenants. You'll also need to provide contact details for the other parties in the dispute. It's important you take a moment now to check the details you've entered are correct. Next, you'll be asked to provide information about whether you've issued or received any notices. If you're not sure, there are helpful hints under each question to guide you. If you select yes to any of these questions, you'll be asked for more information about the notice. Information about the dispute process will appear as you go along. It's important you read this carefully. Next, you'll be asked to list all the reasons for your dispute. You can choose to add multiple reasons. Once you've entered all your dispute reasons, you'll be taken to the summary page. Please check all your details are correct and click the edit button if you need to make changes. You'll then need to check the box at the end of the summary page and click submit. Once you've submitted your request, you'll be taken to the next steps page. We recommend you print or save a summary of the dispute resolution request for your records. Shortly after submitting your request, you'll receive an automated confirmation email from the RTA. If you don't see this in your inbox, you may need to check your junk mail. Keep an eye on your emails in the days ahead for more information from the RTA about your dispute resolution request. So once you have lodged a dispute resolution request with the RTA, whether this is for a bond or a tenancy matter, the request is reviewed by the RTA staff in our dispute resolution service who decide whether it is suitable or not suitable for conciliation. If both parties agree to participate, it proceeds to the conciliation part with a set date and time for all parties to attend. The diagram on the right side of the slide shows this process. The role of the conciliator is impartial. They're not there to take sides nor make decisions but they're there to help facilitate the conversation and negotiations and help parties reach a suitable outcome. If there is an agreement reached, it will need to be signed by both sides. However, if there is no agreement reached, a notice of unresolved dispute is issued and you would need to take that to the tribunal. The matter is deemed to be non-urgent as outlined in the tenancy legislation. Once a notice is issued, you can apply to the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal for an adjudicator to make a determination on the matter. Remember, timeframes apply when lodging an application, and that's whether it's a tenancy matter or a bond matter. Going to the tribunal can add more time in your process. You will need to check in with QCAT to see how long it will take for your hearing. You will need to have all your evidence to support your argument. The outcome at the tribunal can be a win, lose or draw for you, the adjudicator will make the decision. You can find the application, lodgement fees and information on the process on QCAT's website at qcat.qld.gov.au. So just quickly in summary, know your rights and responsibilities under Queensland tenancy law. Attempt self-resolution in the first instance. I know it may be a challenge, but do attempt this first. There are helpful hints and tips on the RTA's website for resolving disputes. If you are unable to resolve the dispute, the RTA's free dispute resolution service can assist. 
and you can lodge a tenancy dispute request through the RTA's web services. Remember, if you don't have digital access, you can still use a paper form. Download the forms from the RTA's website or give us a call. You can keep connected with us by subscribing to the RTA News and you can also link with the RTA on LinkedIn. You can listen to the RTA's podcasts on various tenancy topics through Spotify, Apple or Google Podcast. Remember the RTA is here to help you and everyone involved in the tenancy. Our website has a lot of information and resources available for you along with the access to the web services at rta.qld.gov.au. If you need further assistance, please call the RTA on 1300 366 311 and speak to one of our friendly contact centre staff members Monday to Friday, 8.30am to 5pm. Thank you for your time today.